Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You are very welcome here indeed. Now, in this video, I'm going to cover the results for my latest blood test that also marks the 70th, the 70 month point of my longevity experiment. And we'll see if the addition of berberine to my stack has done anything to drop my HbA1c or my blood sugar levels. Let's get into it. So I have changed the supplements that I take. This is a list of what I was taking four months before I had this blood test. So as normal, NMN, 1.5 grams per day. Trans resveratrol, one gram a day. That's on non-training days. That's weight training. I tend to tr weight train Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I take my resveratrol Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, sometimes on a Sunday too. Metformin, 1,000 milligrams. I now take two 500 milligram tablets. That's the slow release or the extended release tablets. Uh, and I'll talk about how I've changed when I take those later on also. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units uh, every day. And I take 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms. And that's the MK7 version. version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams, the L3 and 8 version. And again, I've changed when I take that particular uh, supplement during the day. I used to take it six o'clock in the morning. I now take that with my DIM um, just before I go to bed between nine and 9.30. Hyaluronic acid, 400 milligrams of high molecular weight, hyaluronic acid. Quercetin, 2.4 grams a day on the first, second and third of each month. Fisetin, 2.4 grams per day on the first, second and third of each month. And there's a link in the description below as to why I do this periodic dosing and I don't take it every single day. Um, I don't take dried par parsley like I used to, one teaspoon with my yogurt, but I do mix it in occasionally. It's not done every single day. So it's six activator, 800 milligrams a day. DIM, 600 milligrams a day. I've changed the way I take that. I used to take 200 milligrams uh, in the morning, 200 between 11 and 12 and 200 before I got to bed or got into bed at night. The container of DIM that I used to get was 200 milligram tablets, and it was one tablet per 200 milligrams. I reordered that uh, exact same supplement, and it wasn't until I was taking it for maybe six weeks that I looked on the back and noticed it was only 100 milligrams per tablet, so I've been under dosing by 300 milligrams. I've now got a different brand, and these come in, in 300 milligram tablets, or capsules. So I'm now taking one in the morning and one at night before I go to bed, and we'll see how that's affected my estradiol uh, in a bit uh, in a bit later on when we look at the score in the video. Glynac, glycine, and NAC, 800 milligrams per day. Creatine, five grams per day. Um, I'm now doing the blood test once every four months, so I'm three months on with creatine and then one month off before I take the blood test. Omega three. Uh, 800 milligrams of EPA and 600 milligrams of DHA. And I've added now also berberine, one gram of berberine. What I used to do before was take the metformin either first thing in the morning or last thing at night. And that was on the direction of the doctor. Uh, it wasn't really affected by blood sugar levels. So I looked at other ways to take it. It recommends, as it does with berberine, to take these about half an hour before you eat. My eating window, because I'm now on pretty much one meal a day all the time, is I'll start eating maybe 1, 1.30 in the afternoon, and then I'll stop eating by about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That might be one big meal or a medium-sized meal, and then nuts and coffee with cream later on. So I'm taking all of the medications or the supplements that are going to hopefully keep my blood sugar down uh, about half an hour to 45 minutes before I actually eat. So that's it for the supplements. Let's move on to my lipid profile. Uh, I'll only mention the things that are in red because they're out of reference range. Uh, you can see here my total cholesterol, 282.30. And that's only high because my LDL is 205. My LDL is 205. And that's what knocks the total cholesterol up. My HDL, which is technically the good cholesterol, but it's not really, um, that's down slightly, but still well within reference range. The things that I think are important, VLDL cholesterol, you can see here, mine is 12.5. It just needs to be between five and 40. So that's well within range. Um, also my triglycerides should be between, should be lower than 150 minus 62. So I'm happy with that. When you look at my LDL HDL ratio, that is within range. And when you look at my total cholesterol HDL ratio, that is also well within range. And 
282 not that long ago was actually considered well within range two. I'm now going to play a video to show you um, why they changed the total cholesterol numbers. And the third thing that they have done is lowered the levels. It was probably about eight years now, a nutritionist and her husband did the program here at Living Springs. They were both in their late 60s. She was a nutritionist. She said, I have the advantage of being in university 40 years ago. She said, 40 years ago, it was very normal to have a cholesterol level of 300. Did you hear that? And if you have a cholesterol level of 190 today, what are you told? You gotta go on the meds. And so in uh, Maryland last year, I was talking to a pathologist. She was in her late 60s. She said, I used to do all the testing. She said, we used to consider 350 was perfectly all right. Let's take a look at my blood sugar levels. You can see here, shock of all horrors, my blood sugar is now lower than it should be. It's underneath the reference range. So the reference range should be 5.7 to 6.4 for that's increased risk. And that's where I was normally around the, the 5.8, 5.7 um, bracket. It's now down to 4.70, 4 which is classed as low. I'm an average Blood glucose level is also 88.2, which is, I put it as low because it was marked low on the result from the uh, hospital. But what they're saying is anything between 90 and 120 is excellent control. This is slightly below that 90, it's, uh, it's 88. So obviously taking the one gram of berberine, which I wasn't doing here in October when I was 5.8, has made a difference adding the berberine to the metformin. What I might want to do, or what I am already started doing, is I reduced that berberine dose to 500 milligrams. So it's still one gram of metformin, slow release, extended release. I'm now taking 50 milligrams of berberine and not one uh, gram of it. Hopefully that will knock it above the 4.70 to 5, maybe 5.1, 5.2, but stay away from the 5.7, 5.8, which is the pre-diabetic range. I'd be interested to see what you think about this quite stark drop in my blood sugar levels, which physically I don't feel um, any different, um, but obviously lower blood sugar levels adds to your um, longevity profile. So I'm happy that it's dropped. I'd rather see it at five or 5.1 than 4.7, but please let me know in the comments below what you think about my blood sugar levels now, my, my HbA1c. Moving on to my liver profile, you can see here, you can pause the video, but everything here is well within range. The things that used to be out of range, you can see here globulin was in and out of range, but for the last uh, year, year and a bit, probably a year and a half since I've arrived in the Philippines, it's now back in reference range. It should be between 2.3 and 3.4. It's now been 3.1, 3 and 2.9. You can see here, these figures aren't blue, they're lilac. That's because they changed the measuring matrix uh, or the metric, you can see that the um, the metric now or the, the reference range is 1.1 to 2.5 and I'm 1.34. So I'm happy with that particular um, score for my liver profile. My renal profile, you can see here, nearly all in the blue. The only thing that's out of the blue, which has been back as far as November 2021, is my blood urea nitrogen, which is BUN. That said, the reference range they're talking about is 22.60. Um, mine was 26. It's dropped all the way down now to 20, still slightly outside, but we'll see what happens um, in four months when I take the next blood test. Moving on to thyroid, you can see here, again, pause and zoom in if you want. These two in blue are within reference range. This one, which is in lilac, is in reference range. You can zoom in to this part of the spreadsheet to see what the reference range is. I can't see from here because I've had to make it a lot smaller than normal because the results are pouring in. Then we've got vitamin D. You can see here, no results for that. And vitamin B12, no results for that either. For some reason, the hospital I went to to get the test results weren't able to do this. So between now and the next blood test, I will get that done probably within the next two or three weeks. I'll go to the other clinic on the island, get that tested and then add those scores in retrospectively um, before I do the next overall blood test and I do the next update on YouTube. 
Let's move on to my testosterone. You can see here that the latest score 5.85, that equates to 585 nanograms per deciliter. Uh, the reference range, which is far too wide, in my humble opinion, is anywhere between 86 to 788. So 585 is very close to 788. So I'm, I'm well above being um, testosterone deficient or a candidate for TRT. Anything that's below 300, uh, people should consider looking into testosterone replacement therapy. Uh, at 585, I'm a good 300 plus over that, so I'm not too worried. Moving on to iron. Um, my overall iron score is still low. Eight um, is low. It should be somewhere between, they reckon, uh, 9.5 and 19. I think um, I have looked at uh, iron supplements. I will now start to take an iron supplement to try and get that total iron number up. That said, my total iron binding capacity, TIBC, is within reference range. My unsaturated iron binding capacity is also within reference range. And my ferritin is, again, in reference range. So I'll take an iron supplement. I'll, I'll try to up the parsley, but it's not easy to get here. That's why I think this score was always high when I was in the Middle East, because you could always get access to parsley, which is very high in iron. Um, and then in four months, I'll see if taking the supplement gets this total iron score up. So that's it for my iron. Moving on to my CRP, C-reactive protein. You can see here, no score. Uh, same as the vitamin B3, B12. They weren't able to test it this time. I am going to go to the other clinic, try and test my CRP. And again, as with the, the D3 and the B12, I will add that retrospectively to the spreadsheet so we can check it out next time. Amylase, they did check. You can see here it's 88, well within the reference range of between 28 and 100. And then we've got lipase. And again, this is 38, should be between should be somewhere between 16 and 77. So happy with my lipase score. So let's look at the analysis of my blood. You can see here, um, as it has been for the majority of the time, everything with regard to my blood test is well within range. There was a, an issue here with my MCH concentration. Um, that was between uh, 2020 and 2021. Whatever that was has rectified itself um, and everything here is well within reference range. So I'm very happy with that. The second part of the blood test analysis. Again, I went to a different clinic this time so I could get all of these tested. You can see here everything again well within reference range. So I'm very happy with the blood analysis element of the complete blood test. Let's move on and look at my estrogen or my estradiol levels. You can see here it's up slightly from 15 to 24. 24, that said, is still well within the reference range of 7.6 to 42.60. They've changed this because the reason that I was alerted to this was that my first test in June of 2022 came back at 41.1. I think the reference range then was 38, so I was high. That's when I started to um, supplement with DIM. You may remember I spoke about the manufacturer that um, I used to use, which has given me all these great results here. Um, they changed the amount of DIM that they put in each capsule. When I was doing the reorder on the website, um, the price hadn't changed that much, but they've reduced it from 200 milligram capsules to 100. So probably for the last two, if not three of the last four months, I've been taking 300 milligrams a day instead of the 600 that gave me these nice low scores here. That said, it's only gone from 15 to 24. I have started to take, I got a new supplier. I have started to take 600 again, but this time it's with 300 in the morning and 300 with my um, D3 magnesium before I climb into bed around 9, 9.30. So in four months time, having now taken the 600 milligrams in two doses this time, we'll see if that affects that number there. Now as men, we do need estrogen in our bodies. We just don't need it at extremely high levels because it can be damaging to our metabolism. Um, so I'm happy with 24. I'd rather be down 16 or 15 like it was before. But if taking 300 in the morning and 300 in the afternoon and not really a great change in price is going to get me a 24, which is somewhere near the middle, I'm more than happy with that. Uh, moving on to EGFR. Again, you can see here they weren't able to test that. So same as my uh, CRP, D3 and B12. 
B12, I'll get that tested in the next couple of weeks and I'll add those scores retrospectively. Then we move on to the final one, which is urine. You can see here, everything is in the blue or within reference range. This one is lilac and that's because they changed the reference range that they use as the metric. The only thing ever wrong with my urine was this one here, which was back in December 2022. That resolved itself. I'm not too sure what that was. But as far as my urine analysis is concerned, I'm more than happy with this blood tests results. So please let me know what you think of these results in the comment section below. And also let me know if you're taking metformin or berberine or both as a way to control your blood sugar levels. How is it going for you?